What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna tell you guys the top five exotics I feel that you should take into the Witch Queen campaign for Destiny 2. And if you guys wanna see more D2 content in the form of guides, class builds, weapon and armor recommendations for PVE and PVP, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any videos. Okay, so Witch Queen is like less than an hour away when this video goes live. Good luck getting into the queue and staying in your place because most likely the queue line will be extremely long and you'll probably have to wait an hour or maybe even more before you actually get into the game. A lot of people will be having their fingers on that X button. <laughs> While you wait, you can actually watch this video. I hope that you all prepare for Witch Queen by getting rid of all of the items in your inventory that were being removed from the game as well as turn in all of your gunsmith materials. If you didn't know, primary exotics are getting a 40% buff in damage in PvE for the Witch Queen. I'll say it again, in PvE, not PvP. This means using a primary exotic weapon on pretty much everything except for a boss is probably the most damage you'll be dishing out. But how do you just pick five exotics when there are like 39 primary exotic weapons? Those weapons are in the description of this video because it would be too long if I just took the time to name them all. You want to look for weapons that do increase damage as you use them or have some perk that will also help with damage in some sort of way. One thing to keep in mind is that the majority of primary exotics work best with their respective catalysts, so that will also be taken into account on this list. While listing these exotics, I will be giving you an alternative weapon if you don't actually like the specific weapon in that archetype. So, here they are. Number one, Risk Runner. Two, Malfacence. Three, Outbreak Perfected. Four, Trinity Ghoul. Five, Dead Man's Tail. I'll explain these choices starting with number five, the Dead Man's Tail. The Dead Man's Tail caught everyone off guard when it was released in Destiny 2. I didn't even think it was going to be good until I kept getting owned in PvP and I was actually getting mad a little bit. Its exotic perk reads, Chaining Precision Hits grants bonus damage and quickens reload speed. Now, the best part about this weapon is that it requires precision hits, not precision kills in order to proc its exotic perk. This means if you are one of those PvE players that like to stay a little bit back in the distance while getting kills, this weapon, if you haven't already got it, would be best for you. Next is number four, the Trinity Ghoul. The Trinity Ghoul and Tiku's Divination are currently the best bows hands down in Destiny 2. However, I put the Trinity Ghoul a little bit higher in rank because of what it actually does. Its exotic perk reads, fires an arrow that splits when released. Aiming down the sights and fully drawing the bow both decreases the spread. Precision kills grant the next shot chain lightning capabilities. This bow is one of the few weapons that I mentioned that will help with add control immensely. Not only that, but it is an arc energy weapon as well, which we will see a lot of in Witch Queen. Outbreak Perfected is lucky number three. If you don't know about Outbreak Perfected, then you don't know about Outbreak Perfected. Outbreak Perfected was once Outbreak Prime in D1. This pulse rifle is a beast due to its Siva Nanites. The exotic perk reads, this weapon creates Siva Nanite swarms on rapid hits and precision kills and does more damage to enemies based on the number of Siva Nanites that attach to them. As long as you are actually getting those rapid hits and precision kills, your screen will be full with Siva Nanites doing extra damage on top of the 40% damage that all primary exotics are getting with Witch Queen. As for our number two slot, we have Malfacence. The exotic perk on Malfacence reads, shoot tainted slugs that burrow into the enemy. Stacking enough slugs cause them to explode. Bonus damage against taken enemies and gambit invaders. Now, hear me out. Malfacence is an amazing weapon, not just in gambit, but will also be in the campaign of Witch Queen because this weapon gets that extra 40% weapon damage for being an exotic primary, but also the Tainted Slugs were given a plus 50% buff increase to their damage as well. Yes, this is a 180 RPM hand cannon, which normally wouldn't even be looked at, but given the two increases in damage that this weapon gets, it definitely will make this top five. 
Last but not least is our number one spot, which is the Risk Runner. As I mentioned before with the Trinity Ghoul, there is going to be a lot of arc damage heading our way, which makes the Risk Runner a force to be reckoned with. Its exotic perk reads, when taking arc damage, this weapon becomes more powerful and resists incoming arc damage. Shots fired can become chain link and return ammo. Kills extend the duration of this effect. This weapon is like Dead Man's Tail and Trinity Ghoul put together, but in a submachine gun. The 40% damage buff that this exotic primary got, plus the increased damage it does when taking arc damage will literally melt ads and yellow bar enemies down. Now, you don't have to use exotic primaries in order to do good damage in Witch Queen. These are just some of the few weapons that I feel would be a good start for the campaign. If you agree with the choices or you have a few recommendations of your own, let us know down in the comment section below and we can have a conversation about this. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.